and uh, transcript. There we go. So this is the first Marley call uh, on Monday, April 17th, 2023. Um, anybody want to check in? Can we do just a light round of check-ins to see where, where we are and what's up? Anybody want to step in? Uh, I'll go. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, uh, I ended up kind of uh, stumbling into uh, what seems like it might be a, a collaboration with Marley. Um, I don't know exactly. Uh, maybe a different way to say it is a is a if if Marley is a bookshelf, then it's a book on the bookshelf or a set of books. Maybe um, it's a it's a a collection of business process patterns. Um, so take uh, 80 or 100 business processes and express them in, in little recipe card form. <clears throat> uh, not quite as a pattern language yet, but, but it might grow into that. Um, so um, uh, Jerry and I were talking uh, Friday uh, about stuff in general, and it seemed like uh, that project uh, makes a good, it's, it's got a lot of the same components that any of the um, Marley projects have um, uh, an editorial team, um, an authoring team, uh, massive wiki publication. So it seems like it makes sense to use that as a, um, uh, as it's, it's its own project, but it, it also interrelates with the other projects that Marley has. So um, <clears throat> since Jerry and I Do you want to ex explain a tiny bit about just to, uh, just to shine a flashlight on a pattern-ish, like what it feels like or something so that uh, whoever's sure. not caught up with that? Uh, sure. It, I think it sticks, um, in, it sticks readily to memory once you've seen an example. And the... Um, <clears throat> uh, so to give a little bit more context, um, there's a, a thing called a pattern language. Um, the original pattern language was written by Christopher Alexander and a, and a bunch of folks and an architect in the 70s who, I, I, it's a, a lot like a cookbook. Um, you have recipe cards kind of, um, they're a little bit longer in the, in the Christopher Alexander pattern language. One of the important things when he calls it a pattern language, um, the there, there's a whole structure to it. Um, so it's not just a set of patterns. It's also the, there's uh, patterns at large scale and smaller scale, and there's interrelationships between patterns. Um, uh, so let me, um, let me find the right thing here. Uh, sorry for having way too many things. Um, I don't know how you find your way around your desktop. So this is, uh, these are patterns over here on the left, um, various patterns. And then uh, each, each pattern card has got, um, it'll have an image. Right now it just has an image description, uh, not the image itself. Um, and then kind of a problem statement and the context statement and a solution statement. Um, let me also show, um, Uh, what I think is a really good example of pattern language. Um, uh, it's called the, this is a group, a set of group facilitators uh, came together and, and kind of um, built a pattern. And um, this is, you can look at these different ways. Uh, one of the clever things that they did was they actually made physical cards um, so you can see that there's a pattern title, uh, a lang an image. Um, they call this the heart, uh, what was in my thing a solution. Uh, they've also got categories. I don't have categories in the business processes yet and then related patterns. Um, so this is actually a pretty good example of a pattern, um, a pattern language. And it comes in a deck of a hundred cards. Uh, it's also, you can download a PDF and things like that. So this has got the related patterns as well. And so working on stitching this together, um, making, you know, making a website, making a 
maybe an EPUB, a Kindle, something, a PDF to download on um, uh, on Gumroad, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's got a lot of the same kind of stuff that we've been talking about for any Marley project. Um, it happens to be about business processes, uh, business patterns, but I'm, I'm actually thinking of it as an example of setting up um, a set of patterns like this. You could do the same thing for uh, sustainable agriculture or social justice or et cetera, et cetera. So it's not just doing business process. It's all, it's, I, I, many of us have had uh, a desire to do a better job of uh, creating a, a set of patterns and then turning it into a pattern language uh, as the editorial board kind of makes it make more sense together. Um, so this is, I, I kind of accidentally got far ahead on this, this particular business process thing and I want to keep going. Um, really briefly to elaborate on what Pete said, <clears throat> this kind of started from a conversation we were both in where um, Pete took the first chunk of frameworks that were in this thought in my brain, exported them and, drew, and sent them off to ChatGPT and said, hey, ChatGPT, um, here's the list. How would you complete this list? And then, hey, could you turn each of the uh, frameworks and met or mental models into a short pattern-like description, uh, which it did, like happily. And, and then like the light bulb started going off with Pete and then with, with like me and so forth of, oh, wait, this would make a great reference of some sort. Um, and I think when Pete says it's almost a pattern language, it's not. It's it's sort of more of a reference work written in pattern style than a pattern language. But you can easily see that what this creates could become components of a pattern language over time. And then I'm realizing from your description right now, Pete, that this you you've named it or focused it more on business patterns than I thought because I thought it was more about uh, frameworks in general. Uh, and I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I yeah. Um... The original name, and, and you might have seen it on the, uh, I'm sitting there, is strategy, manage, strategy and Management Frameworks. Um, strategy and Management Implementation Frameworks. I, I don't know. Um, I, I think as the title gets, you, you want a shorter title on business process is pretty close to what it is. That's current, my, my current thing. Um, I like the idea of strategy frameworks um, as, just as well. So since we talked, Jerry, I have another kind of like turn of the wheel, uh, which I think, which I also want to talk to Marley about. Um, uh, uh, I've been, so uh, there's, a, there's a guy, David Bovel, um, uh, that, um, I wonder if it's me. Um, David Bova and I and some other folks have been working together on and off for a long time. Uh, he's got a framework for doing his, his current project is uh, called Mapping the Future, um, map, map of the Future World, I think. Um, it's much the same thing that, that we talk about in the OGM circles and kind of the related circles. Um, the interesting thing about his project is that um, if, if I look at it the right way, if I squint my eyes and look the right way, he's describing something that's a lot like Marley, where um, uh, you, you uh, establish kind of a framework for people that need to get ideas out into the world um, to have, uh, to come together to uh, author the um, information resources uh, and then do publication. Uh, David adds a bunch of other stuff, which might work well for the Marley things. Um, he adds uh, a very strong connection to art and uh, music and uh, physical in-person events, um, uh, kind of a stage and um, theater um, uh, background. Um, and on top of that, uh, uh, what's really interesting to me is he thinks of each of each each book um, he thinks of as a, a project um, or an, a little organization, um, a little organization with um, project plan and uh, internal commitments and external commitments. 
Um, and then when he puts each of these projects together, he imagines them having cross fertilization and, and cross execution between them all. Um, and so I apologize, here's where it's gonna get weird and I'm gonna jargony, talk jargony and, and you're gonna get turned off, but, um, uh, but uh, listen to this gently and thoughtfully um, and open-mindedly. Um, does it have to do with eating human organs or something? Uh, worse, actually, it has to do with oh. money. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so he sees each of these projects, um, and David does a much better job, or maybe I'm, I'm going to do a poor job of it. David does a better job of it. It's a, it's a thing where you have to talk very gently and carefully and thoughtfully. Um, it's because as soon as you talk about money, or as soon as you talk about DAOs, uh, you know, like, a bunch of like shutters start turning off in people's minds. I don't want to talk about money. I don't want to talk about DAOs. I don't want to talk about yada, yada, right? Um, he sees each project um, having, uh, you can call it a project. You could call it a DAO. Um, DAO stands for distributed autonomous, no, distributed? Decentralized. Or, decentralized. Um, decentralized autonomous organization. Stacey. Thank you, Stacy. Um, uh, he imagined each each he imagines each of the DAOs having internally a uh, a three way balance um, uh, um, mutual credit balance between the partners um, a um, an equity no I'm sorry that's that's the wrong one uh, mutual credit fiat and crypto I guess are the three balances. Um, along with the three balances, there's an equity component built around slicing pie, or, or um, uh, there's another name for it. Um, so uh, the idea is, uh, say you're a web designer, and uh, you want to help this project, and this project, and this project, and this project, or vice versa. You've got this amazing idea business process patterns is going to change the world and everybody's going to be able to like do better stuff because they have a simple, you know, I, I just want this out in the world, but I need a web designer. What you need there is for the web designer to be able to work with multiple projects. You want to, the web designer to, you know, the, the each project lead to be able to find a web designer. You want kind of an over overarching uh, directory of people willing to work together um, uh, sometimes for um, uh, sometimes for mutual credit, uh, sometimes for crypto, sometimes for fiat. Um, uh, and if they're working on something a lot, you want to be able to slice the pie with them. You want to have them build equity in this thing, right? And David, it's it's really hard to think about this stuff without kind of a lot of baggage from our capitalist society. Um, so he he hit a, a couple really thoughtful points for me. One of them is that when, you know, we think of equity, it's like, oh, great, I'm going to make a million dollars in the start in, in uh, startup, uh, you know, equity. Don't think of it that way, but think of it in having more say over the project, right? Somebody who's got 40% equity in, you know, uh, the sustainable agriculture, I'll say Dow, it could also be just project. <clears throat> Uh, somebody who's got 40% equity in it because they've worked a lot on it gets a lot of say about what it's going to do and how it's going to do it and things like that, right? Which in the capitalist society, it's like, well, why would I want that? All I want is to be able to cash out. <clears throat> if we leave the capitalist society, you know, I want a lot of say about my baby. I, I spent a lot of time working on this project and, you know, it, it means a lot to me. And so, yeah, I'm going to take my 40% and, and, you know, talk about how, what I, what I see for it, what I, and, and if I need to bring somebody in a partner, maybe it makes sense for me to cut my percentage down to 20% or 15% and share some of that equity with them. Right. Kind of the same thing with mutual credit. Um, mutual credit, uh, in the way David sees it, is not something that you, you would ever even be able to exchange for fiat. Um, it's something that <clears throat> recognizes, you know, recognizes contribution and, um, and the, the ability to do a little bit of, of trade, <clears throat> um, kind of hour per hour trade uh, with somebody else to hire a web designer, for instance. Um, you know, uh, 
uh, hey, I, I can't pay you any fiat, um, but I could pay you in mutual credit in my project. And then, you know, um, then as that artist accumulates mutual credit in different projects, they might be able to kind of trade that for other mutual credit and then spend it on, I need um, server software or I need, you know, whatever. Um, I need a business plan. Um, I need mentorship. Um, uh, so another interesting thing David said, he's already got people who are talking with him about joining the project that he's got, Map of, Match of the Future World. Um, somebody said something really interesting. It's like, I'll tell you what, um, uh, what I can do is I, the, uh, this was for a software developer or something like that. I'll tell you what, I, I do want to get a little bit of, of fiat out of this project, but I can cut my regular rate down to one tenth. Um, and then David says, that's great because then I can afford you. And David says, I'll tell you what, let's make up the difference in, in half mutual credit and half equity, right? Or 75% uh, mutual credit and 25% equity. So I like the idea of saying, um, you know, I, those of us who've done consulting, you know, it's like, oh yeah, do you have a nonprofit rate? Yeah, I have a nonprofit rate. You know, I, I can work for 60% and then get nothing else. I like the idea of slicing it a little bit more finely and talking about, you know, there's, there's different ways that we can kind of balance things and all work together for benefit while kind of recognizing the, uh, the different contributions we're making. So anyway, <clears throat> this <clears throat> going into that conversation with David, I had already thought about um, uh, uh, dynamic equity is the other name for slicing pie. I had already thought about the business um, process patterns or strategy man management frameworks patterns project as needing like an editorial board and some hands and feet to do things. And it's like, well, I want to, so so immediately kind of the, the equity thing and the slicing pie thing made a lot of sense for involving other people in that because I, I it's a like a little baby that you know I, I started and I'm I'm proud of it and I want to see how it develops and and not just kind of like throw it some of the other projects I've got I've kind of just thrown over the wall into into the public sphere right everything is CC by um, you know here uh, here's uh, some work that I've done and it doesn't end up having a life because nobody cares to contribute to it, partly because they don't either, uh, they don't know how they would contribute to it and have me feel like they're, you know, how, how, how they would value my contributions and how I would value their contributions. If we start having that framework, then uh, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of already predefined about how we might work together and how it makes sense to work together. So having said that, um, I've just described a lot of overhead on any project. It's like, oh, wow, we get to, you know, these three different balances and we got the slicing pie and everybody's keeping count and track. Another thing that David said I thought was brilliant is like, for most people, this is going to be invisible. So the challenge of the infrastructure people, people like David and me trying to figure out how all this stuff works is to make it so that... Um, hey, I drop into a meeting once in a while and, you know, and oh, look, uh, later on, I realize I've got um, mutual credit um, uh, in this in this project, or I've got a little bit of equity or I've got, um, you know, uh, I, I earned a little bit of money because the project, you know, got some money off the sale of de uh, decks of cards and we distributed it uh, per rata over the, the equity holders or whatever, right? So the idea isn't to start with all the machinery first. The idea is to start working together. Um, David uh, referenced The Speed of Trust, uh, a book. Um, start working together, have this kind of in the background as a way that we think we're going to be continuing to build up the way that people implement stuff together. And so this is kind of, to come back around to Marley, this is kind of, you know, I, I think we we had some of the same ideas as we came together thinking about Marley. You know, how do we get OGM to actually produce uh, work output? Uh, how do we structure projects so that they get done? How do we share credit? Um, how do we do things like that? So um, I, I like where this is going. Um, I have a little bit of trepidation. <clears throat> um, the 
business process patterns, I'll keep calling it that for a handy name. Um, already it's, it's kind of a experiment in the it's experiment in my personal domain. Um, it's an experiment in the OGM domain. Now it's also an experiment in David's domain with his three balances and equity and stuff like that. Um, and I think it's probably, uh, if uh, Jordan um, does okay, I think it's, it could very well be an experiment in the Lionsburg domain too. All of these people, you know, we've all been talking about how do we, how do we have a directory of people willing to work together? How do we arrange ourselves working together? How do we actually get stuff done? Uh, so, um, so I'm excited to see it all happening. I'm a little worried about, you know, different frameworks and different people and, um, you know, uh, kind of trepidation about trying something new with a whole other set of folks, but um, I, I have faith it's going to work out, I guess. So I'm sorry that was a little bit longer than the check-in, but that's I was what just I going to say, <laughs> anyone else want to check in? Um, I'd love to, think... oh, go ahead. I'm go so ahead, sorry. Buddy. No, go ahead. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna build in a quick pause. I also needed to just jot something down real quick. Pete, thank you. That was uh, a treat to to listen to, and a lot of that was new to me. Um, I appreciate you explaining. Can I repeat some a piece of that back to you, just to yeah. um, make sure I'm understanding correctly? So, oh, what was it? So it sounds like when we were talking about mutual credit, um, this is gonna be a crude way of, uh, and, and very oversimplified, but just to make sure I'm kind of getting the gist, is it It kind of sounds like you're suggesting the sweat, what some would call sweat equity or the um, work one puts in behind the scenes on the project. We, in this framework, in this model, we um, create, uh, that takes on its own value and becomes a token, a token of sorts uh, that we can trade in, in, in much the same way we would trade fiat currency or crypto. Does that sound close? Does that, does that? Yeah, that's close. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, in our circles, we have a, a few people that are much, I, well, the, the 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 general idea has always made sense to me, and there's the uh, there are time time banks, and um, there's uh, the most famous one is maybe Ithaca Hours, where um, yeah, in in Ithaca, New York, they had a, a system, a community currency system, where you know you could spend five dollars in community currency um, at at the grocery store, actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of them are denominated in hours, uh, and then you you have you have the weird situation where it's like, well, I think my hours are worth more than your hours or mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, there's also another thing, uh, which I haven't heard David cover, um, uh, but if I've made, you know, if, if, uh, if a web designer has mutual credit from a bunch of different projects, how does she spend that on her project? Uh, I think there's a bunch of stuff to figure out. Um, um, so uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of work in, in a couple different layers over probably two or three decades. Um, and we have one of the, the, the world leaders in all of that stuff is Michael Linton, and he's part of our kind of extended community. So um, I think I think the, and, and you can kind of get more heavyweight and less heavyweight. Um, you, there's some uh, financial tricks you can do where uh, you can incentivize people not to hold their dollars but to keep them moving. Um, uh, it's, it gets really technical really fast. I think David's thinking something pretty simple um, to start. Um, but yeah, you got the idea. Cool. Thanks. Um, I'll defer check in, but I would love to hear. Thanks, Jerry. I'm seeing that in the chat. Um, I'd appreciate if you don't use them. Um, I would love to, I missed last week and I don't know where the replay videos or audio of these sessions live. So I'd love to be pointed in that direction if someone can assist me there. Um, would someone be willing to share a little bit about what, thank you, what um, was missed last week, what I missed last week. It sounds like there's a name for this project and I would just love to hear anything and as, as short and quick as you are able, um, just kind of anything you feel like would help me understand where we're at and what I missed last week. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Patty. 
Um, so we've kind of repurposed the sense doing calls on Monday around Pete's challenge to, hey, let's write a book. Let's write an edited volume. So that's the start of this. Uh, and this felt like a sense doing kind of thing because there would be artifacts coming out of it. Um, so that's so, sort of what's happened on Monday. And then we needed a project name and we were trying to think of really descriptive project names. And then Pete says, sometimes you just need project name. And uh, Stacy just had to put her lovely dog to sleep uh, last week. And so her dog's name was Marley. And uh, it occurred to us to like use that as the name for the project. So that's what it is. It's now Project Marley. And I just, I just renamed the, the, the Mattermost channel. And so we're referring to it that way. And it is the, a project to, to write one or hopefully multiple edited volumes or books. Uh, Pete just described uh, kind of a, an AGI, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a chat GPT generated and human edited uh, volume uh, that would be like a reference work <clears throat> that is easy to picture as a published uh, EPUB or Kindle book. That that's not really not hard to imagine. And then uh, that could be the starting point for a whole bunch of other interesting things. Uh, Klaus has uh, a whole series of resources on water, regenerative agriculture, et cetera, et cetera. There's, 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 a, there's a pony and a book in there somewhere. Uh, and um, so we're, we're sort of looking for champions of books. And, and, and here, uh, I'll just step back for just a second and explain a little bit more. Here we're looking at books as kind of uh, attractive souvenir objects but not the whole story. Meaning people know what books are. Books are cultural artifacts. When you write a book, you have certain um, uh, amount of cred. Like there's a whole bunch of people right now writing books, almost like calling cards or websites uh, in order to attract business. Fine, no, no problem. Uh, but the book is a static snapshot of thinking that happened at some moment in time. And what's more interesting is the communities and the ideas and the resources around all these things. So a piece of what Pete didn't describe uh, from our conversation, just for lack of time, was that um, each of the patterns around a particular uh, thinking framework, we could try to crowdsource people who have a lot of experience using that particular pattern to come in and enrich the pattern, add resources and links, and basically make uh, each pattern get better over time. So, so each, each of the components improve over time. And that it could be that, that uh, the fifth edition of this book is far richer and more interesting than the first edition. The first edition was a was a draft uh, pass through the materials with some automation and, and, and light editing. But the fifth one actually 20% of the of the entries were actually made better. So it's kind of the there's a there's like a book in context in motion sort of idea behind this. Uh, and it happens to have the project name Marley. Does that help? Beautiful, Jerry. Thank you. Thanks. And anything anybody else would like to add to that? Or would anyone else like to check in? Maybe I'll check in and <clears throat> sort of uh, piggyback on what you were just saying. So in a in a nutshell, um, Doc is missing today because he's in Vesey in Montenegro, I, I think, right? With his, with his son. Um, so he'll be gone for a couple of weeks. But Doc wrote this book, uh, Garden World. And Garden World, we said, is a destination. It's a place where you want to be at some point in time. And so <clears throat> what is needed is, is uh, a way to get there, the journey you know, to go from here to there, from here to Garden World. And so we focused on, can we write a story about this journey that will take us to where we are today, to Garden World? Um, and Garden World being a descriptor of uh, a world that has uh, adapted itself to mitigate a changing climate and to adapt living you know, in a changed world, which we will experience in our lifetimes. So that's that's uh, in a nutshell, you know, where we were with this uh, particular topic. So in the meantime. Um, I've posted you know, some some things on the server here, but also um, what what uh, I'm I'm interested to do on a parallel note is to develop a conversation uh, with market participants in the food business who are interested to change and adapt uh, into a regenerative. Uh, uh, a, a food system. And 
Now I've been doing this for, for many years and we have pretty much focused on the farmer until now you know, to uh, make sure farmers understand the need to um, recover their soil because over 40% of soils in the, in the US have been lost already, depleted uh, of carbon, depleted of soil microorganisms, you know, causing major damage to biosis, biodiversity, um, and to, to water, you know, watersheds. 50% of US watersheds are too polluted to be used for recreation or fishing. So um, what we are now recognizing is that while farmers are beginning to really dig into this and understand, particularly uh, family farmers who own their own land um, and, and realize that they're losing you know, their, their generational assets here, nothing to pass forward. Uh, if they don't fix you know, their land and, and, and once the soil is gone, there's nothing to pass on. They are, mid, they, are, they are now having difficulty accessing markets because in order to change, uh, in order to repair the soil and watersheds, they have to change the types of crops they're using. They have to change out seeds. They have to rotate crops. They have to use cover crops. And for that, uh, there is no, no readily available market because the industry has specialized in the use of commodity crops that are being grown with GMO seeds and uh, with the utilization, with the utility of chemicals, chemical fertilizers, phosphates, and so on and so on. So now the challenge is how do we get into markets? Well, that means uh, we have to, first of all, find willing retailers you know, prepared to change their menus, change their recipes. Um, we have to find aggregators, uh, processors, um, logistics, and so on. So um, Gene Bellinger and I have, so have uh, discussed uh, collaborating on this and developing discussion groups with uh, people that we are aligned with. And I just had a meeting this morning with my partner from uh, uh, Climate Systems Solutions, CSS, no, Joel, uh, who, who is uh, a retired uh, uh, CEO of a biofuel company. And he is in the, uh, in the biofuel and uh, uh, bio section of agriculture that we would be interested to develop you know, a workshop that, uh, that is hosting a platform for discussions to bring different market participants together and have them start discussing uh, how they can collaborate and how they can partner and what's missing and what are the tools out there that are available in one section, but not known in another section of the economy, software, you know, uh, uh, knowledge tools, specialty seeds, and so on and so on, and uh, and so that would be that could be a parallel project. You know? So we could have this garden world and and the the path to garden world run on one track where we are developing um, um, meta level thoughts, meta level uh, understanding, and then and then. Uh, use that also in the parallel discussions that we are developing. And then for those, we would need help <clears throat> to develop communication tools, uh, Slack channels, uh, uh, tracking of uh, conversations that spin out. Because the idea is that if in the general conversation, we have a group of aggregators who uh, want to take a deep dive into their particular topic, um, that we would then facilitate this also with specialists that can that can assist in this sense. So we are well connected in the industry. You know, we have uh, uh, a lot of access to to people who are deeply uh, engaged already, but uh, highly specialized and in many ways not connected in in a system sense. Yeah. So that's sort of in a in a nutshell. Uh, my check in here. Thank you, Klaus, very much. Um, I love how these things sort of fit. And uh, we now need to organize a bit more and then I think put out the word some and see who wants to show up to take different parts of this under, the, under their care in different ways. 
Uh, Stuart, Stacey, want to check in? Yeah, so um, so quickly, um, for most of this year, I'll, I'll be in and out. I've just got a, a ton of um, travel. Um, that that being said, I think this you know has the potential to be a very important project uh, as I start to think about you know multiple subject areas that could be used once a um, a process uh, 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 a structure um, is designed. Um, one of the things that I, I was a little little concerned about listening to Pete is that in the in the background in terms of structure in terms of contribution i'm i'm still hearing the the strong presence of um a traditional economic model of contribution and um and um and compensation uh and and there's a way in which that concerns me a little um because as we talked about uh, a number of times, we've all, I think, come to the realization that the capitalist model is, you know, what's driving the bus over the cliff. And so, you know, I don't have an alternative to propose. I wish I did. But I think that that may be an important area of, 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 um, of inquiry. Um, in terms of how we design and 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 and, and structure this, um, and I think that's my that's that's my that's my check in. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thanks, Stuart. And you've done more travel than most humans I know through pandemic over the last period. I, I love following your trail on Facebook, uh, so it does not surprise me that you are out and about more. But also, you're consistently here with us, which I really appreciate. Uh, I mean all your travels. So thank you. Um, Pete, do you want to do you want to explain how how uh, the model you were talking about might be different from traditional? Um, I, I can talk around that. Yeah, I, uh, I totally agree, Stuart. Um, the the for each of us, for all of us, um, we are both wanting to share um share and share alike and we're embedded in a capitalist society where you have to pay rent and you have to you know you have to buy some of your food maybe you don't buy all of your food um, or you have to buy you know supplies um uh the uh so uh, listening to David tell the story, he might have um, flourished better around the, the parts where um, the, 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 the idea is heart and, and um, passion and collaboration and uh, sharing love uh, much more than, you know, all the bullshit we get from capitalism. Um, it's, it, it's a, let me back up. I, so David might explain it better. He might not. Actually, I, you know, it's it's a conundrum. It's a it's a conflict. It's a place where we have to live in in both worlds. the The big thing for me is the David talked a lot about you know talking about the speed of trust, for instance. You know, it's not something you hear in capitalist society. It's like I don't care about trust. All I care is about is you know whether I'm getting paid or not. Um, uh, moving into a more collaborative, you know, co coordinating, collaborating, uh, cooperative thing, you still kind of need to keep track of stuff. Um, and it can be a lightweight thing. It doesn't have to be a heavyweight thing. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be qualitative. The, the thing that I'm jazzed about um, is that right now we end up in either or, you know, either you're working for the man or the you know or you you're the man and you've got a bunch of people working for you you've got that or you've got it's all like lovey-dovey free you know i don't want to take your money because i i'm doing this for love kind of thing we we have this imbalance and we have a lot of projects where people can't plug themselves in because the project itself doesn't have 
doesn't answer those questions for you. You know, if I chip in, what do I get out of it? And I'm, I'm not talking about, I do not need, you know, I don't, I don't need $5 an hour, $50 an hour, $500 an hour. That's not what I'm looking for. What do I get out of working with y'all? You know, what do you expect from me? You know, if somebody says, if you work a little bit on my project, I'll work a little bit on your project, or even better, if you work a little bit on my project, I'll, I'll give you, uh, you know, some mutual credit balance that you can go hire somebody that you, you really need instead of me, right? Breaking down the, you know, the, like systematizing the coordination um, in a more lightweight way in a lot more variants than we have with, you know, either you're working for a hundred bucks an hour or you're not doing anything, I think is, is, you know, it's the next step. Um, so, and, and, and I think it will really enable much more collaboration than, than we've got where, where you've just, you, you, you feel frozen out of projects because you don't know how to contribute. You don't know that they would respect your contribution. Um, so I, you know, you, you're totally right. It's a big area of inquiry and kind of like what I said, not only is it important to get right it's important for the infrastructure people people like me and david um, michael linton to as we build these structural things to make it so that normal people don't like have it in their face all the time you know it's not not like you know hey i'm attending this meeting and i'm checking in and you know and then at the end of the meeting okay i'm checked out did i get my you know credits you know um it's, it's got to be a lot more friendly and, and uh, invisible to, to most people while still, you know, letting other people kind of evaluate, you know, do did I, did I feel good about uh, joining this project? Um, oh, look, what a great surprise. I actually, you know, got some, I can, I can get some help with my project because I helped with that project. So it's tricky, I agree. Yeah, and just to, just to pick up on that a little bit, um... You know, our minds are trained to think of, of what we get back um, because, you know, thinking in terms of value, I think, is very important because we all know if an individual doesn't perceive they're getting value out, they're going to stop contributing. Um, but I, I think that we need to be thinking in terms of um, compensation, you know, or value uh, other than financial, monetary, credit, you know, any of those things, because I think those are the things that we're trying to, in some way, purge out of the society we're envisioning in the future. You know, the word garden world <laughs> comes up as a, as a, as a wonderful overriding um, theme. Mm -hmm. There's a big conversation here, and we've we've touched it multiple times in the OGM conversations and other sorts of places. So uh, we're we're not going to conclude it here, but it's important to to fold in. <clears throat> one 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 of my complaints about capitalism is the difference between commodification and commoditization. And commodification is when you take a thing that what didn't formally have a price and you turn it into a commodity. So suddenly pricing water and saying, hey, you have to pay for water, where before you just used to take your bucket and go to the lake and get water or whatever. Uh, and then commoditization is when you make enough of these things that, it, that, that they become commodities, like a number two pencil uh, or a bar of soap or whatever else. And those are different. And capitalism wants everything to have a price and be bought and sold, which is part of what we're worried about arguing with, uh, trying to fight here. And then also capitalism conflates the object being bought or sold with the reward for the value created. So in my perspective, as a creator of occasional content or whatever, I would love for everybody to be able to access as much content as possible for free with no barriers like digital rights management software or anything like that. And I would love to be rewarded for the work of doing so. And, and dis, disengaging those things, on the, uh, disentangling those things is important to me. But again, it's a really, it's a huge conversation. Um, and then just to, to uh, and now for a completely different thing, uh, Patty. Memory, if memory serves, you were going to visit Todd and Pia. Is that in the past or in your future, or yeah. how did that go? If it's in the past, <laughs> it's in the past. That was the month of March. It was magical. It was great. 
Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, lots of fun. Mm -hmm. Love that. And then, yeah. uh, Stacy, would you like to check in, if anything, just about uh, how, you, how you're doing post Marley and anything else? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I, I just, you know, it's surreal hearing his name. And I, I really, really appreciate it because, I mean, this has been a really hard week. But as I said to Patty in the chat, very sacred. Um, so it's it's special to hear his name because one of the things that I realized is what makes it more difficult for me is that I don't want to forget him. I want to remember him. So yeah, I spent a lot of money this week buying myself presents <laughs> that remind me of him and redecorating. And um, well, can I have two minutes to share a quick story? Please. Okay. So I did a lot of shopping and trying to keep myself busy. And I went to Home Depot and I was just exhausted. And of course, I bumped into somebody who asked me about, you know, how I was doing. So I just broke down and cried. And I'm exhausted, but I didn't want to go back to the house because it's just too sad. So I said, all right, I'm going to go to this one other store that I didn't really want to go to. But I decided, OK, I'm going to push myself. And walking out the store, I see the lady vet that I had taken him to the week before. Oh, and I wow. yelled out her name and it was her. And I told her what happened and we hugged. And I walked inside the store after doing that. And in my mind, I said, Marley, you made me come here, didn't you? So that I could meet this woman. And I looked down and there was a plaque and it said, be happy. And just, I've had a week like that. That's one episode, but I've had a week like that. So it's hard not to, you know, as sad as I am, I'm also, you know, feeling really connected to him still. So thank you for letting me share. That's lovely, Stacey. Thank you. Um, after I, my, my last pet was my cat Smidge, who I had to let go of back around 2007. And uh, I got a, the loveliest condolence card in the mail from the vet uh, who saw me through that process. It was just beautiful, very heartfelt. Um, I'm interested in getting us like um, moving forward into the things that we're talking about and sharing about here. Pete and I have taken a swing at um, an agenda or a to-do list and sort of a, a list of tasks for the project, which um, I, I've still got it up on. I'll just do a screen share and we can send you a link to the page. Uh, but I've been crossing off a couple of things. We sort of, we've named the project uh, I changed the references to Marley on the Mattermost, but not necessarily everywhere, but there's still a bunch of different tasks here. But I, I kind of want us to rethink for a second, uh, what are the tasks, what would it take for us to um, get get up and get moving so that the next couple of weeks we have a sense of achievement and progress on this? I just kind of want to want to ask it broadly without looking at this to-do list um, and see what we can do. And then I will not be here next Monday. I have a minor outpatient surgery on Monday. So I'll probably be conked out all day Monday, but I should be fine Tuesday and going forward. But uh, I won't be on this call Monday. Um, what will help us get, get like field progress? Well, one of the things that I saw in the list was, you know, put out a uh, uh, kind of a call to the OGM network about who wants to be champions for a particular, um, my translation content area. Um, and, and I, and I think that, uh, will make people start to feel, uh, that the project is real. Um, that, that we are like, you know, that, <laughs> that we've identified a bunch of areas slash chapters or, you know, individual books, but, but, I think that's an important one. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, 
other thoughts? I think Klaus had mentioned last week about uh, maybe reading together one of Doug's chat, one of the chapters of Doug's book and Klaus, maybe I'm paraphrasing incorrectly, but I thought that was a good starting point. So another thing that comes up, um, you know, and this I guess is directed mostly at, at Pete and Jerry. Um, are you guys confident that if, you know, somebody jumps up and says, um, you know, I want to do a, a, a whole area blank, whatever it happens to be, um, that that there is a, a structure um, <laughs> that's going to hold the, the, you know, the, the, the content? So funny you should mention that. Some of the pages <laughs> that we're building... Um, some of the pages that we've been building have to do with roles and also uh, kind of a design guide or design Bible for what would feel like a book within the Marley uh, universe. Uh, and the roles are a way of trying to guarantee it's a bit of quality assurance. It's a bit of progress management. It's a bit of team building, all those kinds of things. Uh, so we think that each book would wind up having kind of an editorial staff. And again, the language we have on the roles page right now is very much the language of publishing and may change. Uh, we haven't we haven't had that conversation about, hey, what metaphor do we want to use for overall structure here? But we know that as part of as part of putting out the call to OGMers and others, uh, we want to sort of point people to a couple of the pages that you just basically mentioned by 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 asking the question. Uh, and then the design guide is, hey, what are we trying to write here? So uh, Pete started with a, a, a relatively straightforward idea for what a book could be, which is an edited volume that basically has contributions where each chapter is a contribution written by a different individual, but together they make up an anthology or they make up something that 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 they have in common. So that, that's pretty easy to think about. But we also, uh, Pete then just pitched a reference. Uh, I think I think of it, Pete, as a, as a reference work. Uh, that has profiles of different kinds of, of uh, business process frameworks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's, a, that's not necessarily an edited, well, I, maybe that qualifies as an edited volume, but I'm not sure, but it's clearly a reference work that would work. And then I was brainstorming in the chat while Klaus was talking about field guides, field manuals or handbooks for that are crisp and to the point for people, let's say I'm a small farmer and I want to figure out what, what's the regenerative approach to water. Uh, not that we have the best answers, but that we could create a field guide that incorporates some of the best answers and then points to terrific resources around the world and communities online that are fixed, blah, blah, blah. Easy, sort of the same, the same thing playing out. And I can easily see some of those things coming out. Um, and uh, Pete, if you want to jump in and, and elaborate or whoever else or more questions. Good. Did that, did that help or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jerry, I've got questions or answers to your question. Excellent. I love that. Uh, so <laughs> one of them is is actually, I have a word, but I'm not going to use it. Um, OK, I'm going to use it. Uh, one of them is, uh, it's funny, prosecuting the the to-do list, executing on the to-do <laughs> list, a bunch of like, oh, oh man. anyway. Um, uh, I would like to see us work the to-do list every week, um, and maybe it will change from a to-do list to something else, but we should go over the things and check off the ones that are done and move the dates for the ones that we didn't hit yet and uh, talk about which are important and stuff like that. So actually working the tasks is, is a sign of maturity for me. Um, having a list of the uh, books, so already Klaus talked about two and I talked about one. And then I think we've got another one, which is the, the first book to do um, is another concept that we have. So already we've got four books. We need to be tracking those on our wiki um, or where we track stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think those are things that would make me feel like we're uh, have a sense of achievement and progress. So I'm just, I'm just, 
Go ahead. Taking live note, live notes on the tasks page um, because because it's yep. in Obsidian and uh, it's easier for me to just push this once we're done, and then we can all see it. Um, so I just added convene book teams, and I think that the conveners so far that we're thinking about are uh, Doug, Klaus, you, and me, uh, and anyone else who wants to jump in, like like we would immediately add. And then we need to figure out what the name of each of these uh, uh, is, what the name of each of these book pro book like projects is, so that we can refer to them as we go. Uh, and then Pete and I were trying to, we were already thinking a, a little bit ahead about how to structure. Where does the work of a particular book project go? And there's a sort of a folder for we'd like to keep the book projects uh, in, in a particular space on the on the wiki, et cetera. Um, but that that's very doable. Um, yeah, looking looking at the list, Jerry, I think it's um, this notion of, of by four sixteen. Uh, which is the date in the past, I'm afraid. It's a weird date. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that. And yeah, you would, you would come up with a description of 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 Marley um, for the Plex. I think that's an important piece because that's the big vision. Mm -hmm. And that's a uh, so Pete sent his reminder note this morning to hey any contributions for the Plex and that's one of the things I want to write for the Plex. So that will get done. Right. Mm -hmm. um, change change the date. Okay. Uh, I think I can. Well, I, it needs to be done by tomorrow, so I'll put um, it tomorrow's day. It should be done Wednesday. I will finish it. By Although a, the draft should be done tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, and change the date for reorg the wiki pages. Let's do that too in the next day or so. Um, I I would propose another one in the chat. Um, I, it says potential task. Define what metaphors we want to use for the overall structure here. Uh, sorry, where are you? Um, in the chat. A new one? It's oh, in, in the chat. chat, sorry. You can just copy and paste it. So um, from the with my business process patterns hat on, it, it feels um, it feels like I've got a team. It's actually me and Jerry right now. Um, me and Jerry and chat GPT, I guess. Um, we've got a team already, um, and so instead of finding book champions, I don't know, it, it, that one doesn't have to change, but um, I've got a project that's going to have connections to Marley, it's going to have connections to um, Map of the Future World, it's going to have connections to Lionsburg. So, So another another observation I have that task and write the fact entry aren't books dead are related to one another. I don't think we have to represent that yet, but as a project manager, I can see that we need more. Yeah, partly putting out the call across OGM our... land, but putting out the call across OGM land kind of is dependent on. Uh, answering some of the questions that are above it so that we have enough structure to to send out i think um, and pete I put a calendar entry a repeating calendar entry in my calendar for fridays to do this thing okay so okay. Uh, so you can check so that i off. think i think i'll I, check that off for now yeah and then re re rewrite a little bit um set up reminder instead of send a reminder set up a reminder or whatever Got it. I wonder, um, I would love to show folks the uh, Tools for Thought map project tracker, which is conceptually the same as our task list here. I wonder if that would be fun or not. Do you want to do it during this, this, now during this call? Uh, we could do that. I mean, it, it would be a nice way to show people what a project, what a project tracker might be like for this project. It's um, uh, yes, exactly. And it also would be really scary looking, I think. <laughs> well, perfect. Scarier than this, for sure. Um, and then we don't have here to flesh out the design Bible or whatever it is. 
yeah, she had that. Cool. What else? Um, let, let me just back go back to the question I asked earlier. Which of these things would make us feel like we're seeing progress, like we're moving forward? Or, or are we missing something that would give us that notion? So working this, this list uh, feels to me like we're making progress, and I appreciate that. Cool. I think it would help to write an abstract for those books, for Doug and Klaus and for Pete and Cherry. You know, write an abstract of what is it that you have in mind here. Yep. Um, so convene book teams and then uh, uh, write. Um, you can do, you can hit tab and it'll tab in if you want. Uh, just to make things subordinate? If you want. Oops. Uh, so you're saying just that? Yeah. Except, okay, that's fine. I think you can hit tab any place in the line. I don't think that's Oh, gotcha. Place. Cool. Uh, and I guess this, this is sort of subordinate to that, to find book champions, convene book teams, write abstracts. Jerry, cool. I, a really early thing before we even had task list, we had the idea of doing a first, doing a first book. Of doing a quick and a quick first book. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, good. It's that one. Got it. Yep. Um, and in fact, I'm going to do what you think I'm going to do and create a page for it. Lovely. I mean, quick first book could also be an extended abstract. Um, yes. There's a there's a Ouroboros kind of snaking in its tail thing that you have to watch out for when you do when you the, create pages like that. Well, when the, the when your first project output is the description of the project. Oh, the way it can be confusing. Said. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think we're thinking of something that actually smells like a book, but is the, the simplest thing we could possibly do. That may not be referencing the project itself, but rather some, uh, some other thing out in the world. And it may involve already written chapters from somebody's work somewhere. I mean, if we had uh, a couple of different contributions that fit nicely together, we'd be on our way. Would be so, God wrote. Garden World would be a good first one, but it's too big of a project, I think. And then um, uh, business patterns, business process patterns would be a good first one because it's pretty far along, but it's the wrong shape. How do you mean the wrong shape? Or shape? <clears throat> it's a reference book, not a, you know. Well, so part of the reason I was riffing earlier on reference books, field manuals, uh, handbooks, and then book books sort of thing, you know, more normal books of nonfiction, um, was that I would love for the collection to include a variety of formats. So, so uh, a reference guide sounds like a great shape it's, to me. I, I don't, I think it's, uh, I would propose that it's not a good first shape. Um, because and, first, yeah. Uh, and, and, and maybe even more importantly, uh, you and I are too involved in it already. So if we had, you know, if we had four or five participants from OGM talking about meeting facilitation or sustainable practices or social justice or dynamic equity or. Doc was thinking about an illustration of that world. You know, using maybe, I mean, he was talking about a PowerPoint format, but maybe more like an illustration. Remember what Yuval Harari did with his uh, brief history of, of humankind? He, he developed a children's picture book out of it. Nice. Something, nice something along those lines. 
I, part of me was hoping that we could maybe deconstruct garden world politics and then choose a chapter that was nice and modular and recomposable and start with just that one chapter or chunk of a chapter as a, a contributed volume uh, piece, uh, a chapter into a, an ended volume that could work. Um, and I also like the idea of, of the same work at different levels of, you know, explain this to me at different levels and also explain this to me in different modes, uh, you know, make a video of it, make an animation of it, whatever, that would be cool as well. Maybe uh, use, a, use an illustration AI. I've seen some amazing, uh, one guy inserted biblical verses from the Bible into a graphics AI and got amazing illustrations back from it. Maybe we can use something like that. That sounds cool. Cool. Um, Pete, do you want to do the project tracker demo? I do. That would be great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, as as uh, as preamble, um, the project participants in Tools for Thought all are database database geeks. So this wasn't weird for us. Um, I think it's so it's not Muggle friendly at all. Um, and having thought about this a long a long time, I think the thing to do is to have a complicated issue tracker that database people don't mind working with. So the project management folks, and then having most people not having to look at that or interact with it. So this is like the how to make the sausage, not you know, not the people making the sausage. Um, so uh, these are the different tasks we've come up with um, over time. And then uh, a thing that we all really like is how many fields we have for each task. So let me um, uh, let me open one of these. Uh, so there's a tracking ID. Uh, we've got a flag for discuss this one at the next meeting. Uh, it's assigned to a, a person, um, and it's signed off by a person. We've got what phase of the project uh, it it might apply to: phase one, phase phase zero, phase one, after phase one, after phase two. Um, what status it's at, uh, whether it's something we're going to consider at some point, but not anytime soon, um, or it's work in progress, we're actually doing it, um, or it's done and uh, we need other people to review it, um, or it's resolved. Um, we've got place for uh, like a link to something, notes for things. Uh, we don't actually use priority or effort yet, although but it also doesn't freak us out to have those lying around where if, if I was making this mogul friendly, I would hide those probably. Um, and a place to put attachments. Let me see if I can actually. Uh, so then we have, I'm gonna come back to attachments. Then we have different views of it. Um, so this is, grid view is kind of like the everything Excel spreadsheet thing. Um, you can uh, do a database trick um, so this is filtered by need to read, uh, need to read, needed for phase two uh, as needed phase two, and it's not resolved. Um, so then this is a list that you can look at and go, oh, I get it. These are the things that we actually care about. Um, you know, all the all the ones that are resolved are out of here. All the ones that are P zero are out of here. Um, I can look at just my task list which is kind of the same as unresolved right now. I, I created a bunch of subtasks here. Um, and to do that, I made a, a new thing called, oops, I made a new thing called parent task. So all of these are a subtask of these parent tasks. Um, or you can look for just what are open tasks that aren't assigned to anybody. And these different views, you can do lots of different ones, you know, lots of slice and dice it lots of different ways. Um, we played around with a Kanban view. Uh, this is a, a thing that is part of the Airtable that we're using. 
you can actually drag and drop these um, into different columns and you can create stuff in a column and things. Um, we haven't mm -hmm. actually been using the Kanban view, even though this, this is nice sometimes. Um, let me show you the attachment thing. Uh, this is a place where um, So just as, as color commentary, so Pete and crew have effectively used Airtable to reconstruct a project management app like Monday or name or your Asana or, Tro Tro or Asana or Trello. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a place where I wanted to have a screenshot of this um, because in doing some other tasks, I know that I'm going to make this look, not look the way it looks anymore. And now I, I need to make sure. So I wrote a note to myself um and uh this has got a part that i'm going to need to look at later when i'm working on this task um matthew has been really good at, at doing um uh matthew's been good at using comments uh so you can for each each item here you can have a whole comment thread about stuff um uh and go back and forth about you know what's going on um and the, are the comments a discourse option in Airtable, or are they just a subtable that's acting as comments uh they're actually part of the the object um that the uh, table row cool. um i have to say i think there was another project a similar thing where i actually we we implemented um a comment feature in the the table itself it was hard to use but but we okay. it um so the uh the way the way jerry said this we built a tool we built the project tracker in um, Airtable. it's it's a lot like people with an erector set or legos or something knocking together something and so to anybody else it's like oh my god that you you want me to use that lego thing <laughs> to do my actual work um and uh the the short answer is it's not muggle friendly and i understand that but for people who are fluent in it, um, we'll, we'll, ha we'll have a task. I, one of the tasks we checked off, I, I won't dig it up, but it was like uh, review the columns that Pete added and subtracted over the last week. You know, So it's like, OK, I added this one. I take away these other ones. And you know, Bill and, and Matthew will go through. Oh, that sounds great. Check it off. Done. So being able to hack the structure of it is something that's really, uh, you, you can do the same thing in Excel or Google Sheets um, or paper. Um, each has their pros and cons. Um, uh, so I, I see more and more like sophisticated, like maybe not sophisticated, people who are doing a lot of project management. Um, the, um, uh, I know Asana is a big favorite of folks. Um, Monday is great, um, Trello is great. Um, uh, if you if you have a little bit of uh, facility with Google Sheets or Excel, um, and you don't mind playing around a little bit, Airtable is even better, and it just makes it more fun to manage the project and easier because you can invent a field like, oh wow, I need to keep notes, or oh wow, I need to keep attachments with something I just added, and it was because I needed it for one thing. So someday we'll have something in between um, a small little page of checkboxes and this monstrosity. So we'll get there some, somewhere in the middle. And hopefully most people won't even care. It basically depends with how many people you are communicating, what kind of project manager. I mean, I used Excel for really complex projects and since yep. I was the core driver, it works just fine. But when you have a lot of people communicating with, to communicate with, then, then what you're showing there is, is seems to be a whole lot more practical. Yep. yep. Well, it's got so lots and lots of power. Lots and lots of power. It's a, it's a little like um, how many steps does it take to start this thing up and run it and so forth. Um, so now you well, get to check off that uh, task. Oh, good. Exciting. Can I do that now? Check. It's checked. Um, let me just go back to the screen share. We are getting close to the end of this call time. Um, 
I've got a couple things that I've signed up for here. Uh, so I have a feeling that this, that, well, and I won't be on next week's call, but one of the things that seems important to do is to start fleshing out what does it mean to do a book team and, and what, and, and maybe we need a template for book teams or something like that. Um, I think I, the, I, I don't want to say one should come before the other, but um, I think we should double down on quick first book and yeah. turn the crank once and see what happens. That sounds great. I think that's a great idea. That would be fabulous. Before before we start sort of splitting up into book teams and doing all that, you mean? Just to, to well, focus together. It, it turns out we're going to do it in parallel, I think. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. But uh i think we can get a quick first book done in two weeks i don't think we can get it done by next week do you gotcha. have a topic no <laughs> we talked about some garden you know simplified garden world things um yeah it's so too bad that duck is uh out of town so to speak for the moment he, he, he may be available on email Mm -hmm. He's I, the, like the quick first book thing. It should be like really easy to get our arms around, even really easy to get a hand around, and just go, okay, I I understand what we did, and you know, I can write down the. Uh, so, uh, Stuart had a great a great question. You know, hey Pete, hey Jerry, are you guys actually confident that you have a, a workflow and a process and all that? I'm confident that we can build one. Um, and we have a lot of tools that will support us. Uh, we haven't actually, we don't have any proof yet. Um, mm -hmm. And so Garden having- World can actually, Garden World can be reduced to a very simple uh, 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 concept, you know. It, it, it's, uh, there's a lot of text around it, but the core principle of what Doug was, was after here uh, can be summarized fairly easily. And what Pete just said, I turned into a page we sort of need to start editing called the Marley workflow, which is, uh, okay, good. Once we, once we start doing the quick first book, we're going to figure out what does that mean in, in terms of production process. And I'm, uh, so Klaus said the core principle of what Doug was after um, was, is fairly simple and straightforward. I quick first book uh, like an uh, overview of Garden World, I think would be a good one. Hmm. Um, cool. I think we could recruit uh, Klaus. So, We'd have to wait. So for do we, so I may be having holding too high a bar up here, but for a quick first book, I was thinking of something that had contributions from at least two people, maybe three. Um, oh, and okay. And quick review of, of Garden World sounds like maybe just an excerpt or several chapters taken out of Garden World and reposted as a short book, uh, which is a simpler project, but not as uh, uh, hydra headed as I would love. What uh, thoughts? I, I think you could have, yeah. you know, four people do that. I don't think it has to be one person doing that. So uh, m my thought is, and this is congruent jerry with your um faq aren't books dead um the whole notion of the book being the book being a, a living thing that it's not just a static thing or at least the books that we're thinking about um mm -hmm. and i hope we're thinking of them being a living thing so um the idea of you know starting with the overall concept of what garden world is and then um you know people contributing in some way other other folks contributing in some way i mean that's my that's the way i i would see it mm -hmm. it could also be um uh, this is just a model but ivan Illich wrote uh tools for conviviality way back when and there, there was another book uh shoot i thought it was this book of his uh, no it was a uh, de-schooling uh, deschooling society. Sorry. So there's a there's another book called After Deschooling What, and this is basically critiques of deschooling society by a bunch of interesting thinkers from back in the day. Um, so this is uh, maybe maybe a simple model, maybe too complicated a model for what we're talking about. But deschooling society is sort of this important book. Uh, go ahead, Stacy. 
So I, I don't mean to divert and I will not be offended if nobody likes this idea, but what's coming up for me in terms of garden world and farming and all these other things is I always think about the role of animals in our society. And I know this holds a place in Pete's heart in terms of how he eats. And I think about how our world would be different if we thought about animals differently and all the ways and the different ways that people from different fields would relate to the way we view animals and the way it affects our world. It affects government policies, it affects religion, it affects farming, it affects the soil. And I'm just wondering if there might be a way to organize around that as a sample, just throwing it out there. <laughs> I would love to find some uh, images, uh, AI generated uh, uh, interpretations of that, uh, Stacy, because we can, if you enter a uh, text of what you just expressed, that will translate it into an image. And then you can refine that image into, you know, so we could really uh, illustrate uh, this, this first book or add some illustrations that are enriching the book itself. I bet you Christopher Chase might actually have something that he created by hand. Hmm. You're friends with him on Facebook, I know. Hmm. Um, and Stacey, what you just described um, feels to me like the next bump up from the simplest book we could do, where okay. um, something about the simplest book would be would, would contain some content about animals, and then there could be a point of view taken about what it means to treat animals differently. And that could be a book uh, published on top uh, or beside uh, the original book that has a, some kind of strong opinion about um, what you mean about how we see animals. So could a, simple, could a simplest be, I mean, I, I, I didn't read The Dawn of Everything, but I'm assuming that there was some stuff in there about that. Could a, could a no, there wasn't? Not, not really specifically, no. Oh, okay. Because I'm just thinking, could a, could a simpler book be just taking what we know from different religions and from Native traditions and starting there? I think there? up a different topic, Stacey. Okay. The, the, this first book, yeah, the, I mean, there's an integration of, of farm animals you know, into our food system. And, and uh, then, you know, even in the Jewish tradition and the kosher tradition, right, is to treat these animals with respect and... and, and uh, uh, and, and integrity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm out of ideas then. <laughs> I, I think those are good ideas. I think they're mm -hmm. just a little bit further down our path. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, so uh, maybe a different way to ask the question is what could a few people in OGM do in an, I'm going to say in an afternoon, it might actually be a couple, you know, one hour meetings or something like that, but there, there should be things where OGM is, we, we talk about it so much that a few of us could get together and just put together a thousand words or you know, 2000 words. So what, what, what is OGM really good at? How to run the Zoom meeting. Um, uh, uh, attracting uh, like-minded people. Um, Oh, so you're talking more meta processy things as opposed to content. Well, those are maybe oh. bad examples. Um, soil health might be one, um, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> or, or climate change, climate, you know, 2,000, <laughs> 3,000 words on climate change and, and you know, where, where, where we go from here. Mm -hmm. I actually like that one. It's the opposite though. I guess it's the complement of garden world. It's the, yeah. the stick instead of the carrot. I mean, if we were doing more sense doing stuff, for example, and, and like Doug is on is on the road for a while, but I really loved the idea of doing sense doing around his claim that, hey, anything we do to mitigate climate change is going to cost energy. And therefore, there's like this catch 22 situation. I would love to unpack that. And it's not a thing that we're expert in, but the act of sense doing around that would cause a little book to, to, to come into being that would have some point of view about that. And in fact, very likely, there could be two books uh, around that one topic that had different and, you know, edgily different kind of point perspectives on it. That would be, that would be interesting, novel, 
uh, et cetera, et cetera, a topical. Would it, uh, would so it be forth. easy? It, it might uh, be. Not, it's, it's, not as e it's not as easy as taking simpler uh, found parts and sort of assembling and editing them. That's, that's, I think, easier. This would involve convening the sense doing to do that. And as yeah. we've seen, it's not a, not a simple task. So, but, almost, but it would excite me. It would excite me enormously to to sort of tackle that question because I think that question is one of those lovely friction points at the leading edge of how do we mitigate climate change. The um, the similar pig further down a, a different python is indoor air quality. Actually, yes, I was thinking also about masking and indoor air quality as the subjects of a of a simple book and sense doing as well. So, I would be up for that as well. This is this is a bigger one, but what pops up, what popped into my mind is you know, the title has been used, you know, Brave New World. <laughs> it is a catchy title, <laughs> apparently. I going back a little bit to Metaprocess, which I don't I which I love, of course, but which I don't think is good for this. But anyway, um I I know that Ken was involved in World Cafe. Um and I, I would love a little handbook of, you know, here, here's World Cafe, here's uh, open space technology, here's, you know, four ways to get people together and, and um, be more productive. I think we it's have a lot of subject matter expertise about that in the, in the larger room. Yeah. yeah, there's a book, there's a book called um, The Change Handbook, which incorporates I don't know what the number is, um, was edited. I, I made a contribution to it. It was uh, edited by a professor at the, uh, um, the OD school at, um, at Bowling Green State University. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Peggy Holman's involved in that. Uh, yeah. As a friend. Tom DeVane. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, there's, uh, years ago, I was bitching that there wasn't enough written about appreciative inquiry online. So I was like, gosh, I wonder if there's like a little book of appreciative inquiry. Turns out there's a book called The Thin Book of Appreciative Inquiry, <laughs> um, which unfortunately is so thin that it didn't add meaningfully to my understanding of appreciative inquiry, which is too bad, but it's in the same general uh, direction. Yeah, I'm actually working on a um, on a project called The Thoughtful Citizen's Handbook. Um, cool. A new, a new edition of it. Um, and and Diana Whitney wrote, you know, one of the chapters um, in it. Um, That's interesting too. I think yeah. I think I think pocket sized field manuals handbooks are really really interesting as a genre mm -hmm. because they're light. You can charge very little for them. They move around a lot, and if they're good, they could be really useful to people. Uh, Patty. Uh... Hey, Sherry, just wanted to chime in real quick before we finish up here. Um, not really related to, to what's being shared. Um, I'm just uh, want to acknowledge that I don't really know where I can contribute at this time in this project. I don't know that I have a lot to offer in the way of a lot of the topics that tend to be discussed in these groups. So I don't think I could speak on them very knowledgeably. Um, that said, I do feel that I have some um, editing skills I can bring forward. And I also would love to, at some point, uh, contribute something I don't really know what yet around, I think my, my wheelhouse is, um, my interests lie in, you know, human behavior and what I've been calling uh, emotional mechanics or emotional physics and just the relational dynamics between people and um, unpeeling deeper layers of that. Again, I don't know where that fits in, but um, I'm just wanted to toss that out there. And I'm open to taking direction and invitations around this too, because I don't really know where to put myself yet. So that's a so delightful, that's a delightful way to check into the project. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. Um, and I can easily see you creating a, uh, emotional physics perspectives on any of the other sort of topics that have come up here. It'd be really interesting. Mm, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Thanks. And that would fit really nicely into the sort of remix, remix of, of book-like artifacts that we're thinking about doing. Right on. Um, cool. Any other last words before we wrap this call? Thanks all. Let's be careful out there. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.